Alright guys, it's Trap Box Reviews. Come with you guys my review for Succession Season 4 Episode 2. Alright, so we're back for the second episode of Succession Season 4, the final season now. And I'm a little bit mixed on this episode, I have to say. And I did say in the last uh, review for, for the premiere episode, this is probably my favorite show on television. I think objectively one of the best. Uh, maybe after Better Call Saul ended, of course. Um, but this episode to me just kind of, I, I don't know, a lot of my criticisms with season three are now coming back up with this episode in particular. So I'm gonna go over that, but overall, just as the episode itself, I thought it was very good, right? Very good, a lot of great parts about it. It's more just how it kind of fits into the overall story here and the kind of final arc that we're, it looks like we're going on here as the show comes to a close. We only have eight more episodes now. So anyways, I'll get into uh, more of my thoughts in the uh, recap of the episode, then I'll share my rating uh, and some more predictions uh, as to what I see you know, going on for the rest of the season and especially next episode uh, with Connor's wedding. So uh, we'll get into all that towards the end. Uh, but I'd love to hear what you guys thought of this episode. Uh, are you like me? Did you notice some things that kind of bothered you a little bit uh, with kind of where the story is going? Or do you really enjoy it and you didn't really have any problems. Love to hear what you guys thought uh, either way. And if you enjoy this review, please leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel as well. We really appreciate that. But without any further ado, like I said, let's get into a bit of a recap for this one. I just have a few points here uh, to touch on from this one. And I'll kind of, you know, share my thoughts on why I'm kind of mixed on it. I guess kind of throughout um, the, the recap here on some various things. But anyways, let's start this one off with Logan and ATN. So this is, uh, you know, kind of the beginning of the episode, chronologically speaking, um, where he visits the ATN offices. Uh, and uh, we see him give this kind of speech to the staff that are there. It's like kind of this election, um, you know, big room that they have set up there, right, for the, the election that's coming very soon. So obviously they have all the coverage going on. Um, and of course, it's not lost on us, you know, that the the Fox News ATN, I mean, the, the comparison uh, to the to the real world stuff is just, um, you know, it's, it's so prevalent here, right? It's so uh, prominent in these scenes and also just this whole kind of plot uh, really mirrors uh, the Rupert uh, Murdoch, which a lot of people have said, you know, Logan Roy is based off of. I believe the creators have even kind of hinted at that as well. Not just Rupert Murdoch, but he's kind of one of the figures that Logan is based off of. Um, and when Rupert Murdoch uh, sold the 20th, 20, uh, 21st Century Fox, uh, sorry, to Disney, uh, he actually kept the part, uh, you know, that is Fox News. And so he's still the head of Fox News and very much, you know, focused a lot of his efforts um, on that, on into Fox News when they kind of got rid of the 20, uh, 21st Century Fox uh, there. So it is kind of a mirror there, right? And you see the, the kind of similarities here that they're painting with Logan taking over ATN. Um, you know, Waystar Royco is going to, you know, be bought out by Gojo, but he's going to hold on to ATN exactly the same way Murdoch held on to Fox News. It's a big company acquisition. It's It's really, really similar, right? And so he's going to go down this lane of, um, you know, pursuing the news, staying in it, um, and really getting involved with ATM. And like I said, this speech, this whole sequence here is just kind of representing that. And I really like this because at the end of last episode, what otherwise could have just been maybe a throwaway scene of him just watching ATN that night and complaining about it, um, it really actually came through here in this episode because it was such a big story. And that last scene kind of set up exactly what all plays out in the way, you know, why Logan is showing up in the ATN offices and why he's so um, invested in this all of a sudden. Um, so yeah, so I thought that was really interesting. Of course, some hilarious lines here, uh, you know, about Greg and saying uh, Jaws, right? If everyone worked for Jaws um, and uh, Santa Claus Hitman and, and, and stuff like that. So some great lines when he when they kind of, uh, Greg calls Tom, telling him that Logan's on the floor, right? Uh, and of course, Logan, the I believe the clip that was in the trailer too, and he says, oh, I love it here, right? Um, so yeah, some really, really great moments in there. And then of course, I'll get to 
to kind of later on in this recap. But of course, the whole carry audition tape is, is a big uh, part of this as well with him coming into ATN. And so, of course, we get a lot of those kind of shenanigans there. And that's kind of how Tom gets uh, roped in there as well. So this is a really uh, kind of interesting kind of angle here that they're going at. Um, and before, towards the end, you know, towards, I guess, the middle of the episode, when we knew that the Gojo deal was now kind of on the rocks, maybe, um, this was, it, you know, seemed very possible that this is kind of where we're going with the season. Logan's going to be at ATN, maybe the kids are at Pierce, and now they're going to go head-to-head in, in, in terms of the news coverage and that kind of thing, um, which is just, you know hilarious, right? And, and really creates for some great, um, you know, conflict between the two sides. So, um, yeah. And, and just imagine, I, I was just thinking too, like the real life, um, you know, comparison, right? They're mirroring a lot of real life stuff with the Rupert Murdoch stuff, as I said, and just imagine like if Rupert Murdoch's kids then went and bought, um, eh, something like, I guess, MSNBC or something, right? Um, you know, and, and we're now in, com in competition with Fox News. Um, it would be very strange, right? And so, uh, I just, I just find that fascinating, of course, um, how the show is just on its, you know, just on its, by itself is very effective and, and really enthralling. But then when you actually look a little bit further into kind of how it mirrors real life, um, I feel like you get even more out of it. And so definitely you can see that here early on in the episode, uh, or on the season rather, and in this episode here with, with Logan and ATM. All right, so then let's get to Kendall, Roman, and Shiv. So their whole part in this episode, uh, which is again, just like last episode, obviously, you know, they're our main characters. It's the biggest plot that kind of went through kind of the through line of this episode, as I like to say. So they're pushed by Sandy and Stewie, uh, and really Sandy is his daughter, of course, because um, Sandy is, is unable basically to speak and even do much. So, of course, his daughter, uh, played by Hope Davis, who's great, by the way, um, is kind of stepping in. So and her name's also Sandy. So Sandy and Stewie. And so they're kind of pushing the kids to delay the Gojo deal to negotiate for more money, or at least that's what they're telling them. That's kind of what the surface thing here is, that they just want more money. Um, of course, we don't, we don't know the whole story. I'm sure there's a little bit more to it than that, but that's kind of what they are, are telling the kids. We want just a little more money and we know we can get it from this deal and all that stuff. So Shiv is on board, it sounds like, and she gets, you know, a phone call, um, with Sandy a little earlier on in the episode, and we see that she uh, has already had contact with her about it, and she's on board, and so she's kind of having to convince Kendall and Roman, um, who are very hesitant about it. They're, they are kind of just accepting that, yeah, you know, what happened in season three played out, dad screwed us, Gojo's, you know, buying the company, and they've kind of just accepted it now, and they're just ready to move on with their lives and, you know, with this direction of getting Pierce and the 100, you know, last episode that they were trying to do. So they're on this new path, and Shiv is still trying to kind of bring them back into the fold here in, in trying to, you know, now go back on the deal. And so ends up that she does uh, convince Kendall, which uh, is is really not even her doing right, because we see his call with Matson, um, you know, who basically threatens him and says, "If you try to negotiate this deal or do anything here and it doesn't go through, I'm out. I'm out of this deal." Um, and um, you know, basically, you know, telling him outright, you know. I'm out if you do anything to try to break this up. And so, of course, he in the in the call kind of is like, yeah, yeah, like accepts it. And then he'll go back to Shiv and Roman uh, at the uh, restaurant. I think they're out with Connor there at that point. Um, and he he says, oh, I'm, I'm down, I think, actually. You know, I've, I've looked at the comparables. So um, really interesting because, you know, that we just know then that Kendall is, he knows that Gojo's probably going to back out of this, and yet he still wants to do it. So... Obviously, he wants this deal to get blown up, right? He wants Gojo to back out, and so now they're right back in the game, right? Um, and so it's it's a really interesting thing, though, because, of course, Roman and Shiv don't even know that he had that call with Madsen. Um, and still interesting, too, that he has that relationship with Madsen that he would even call him to warn him there. So I thought that was really interesting. Um, and then, of course, Roman is convinced, too, because it's kind of just two against one. And he, uh, you know, as we see, it's, it's just an ongoing theme throughout the series, but especially this episode, 
he really is kind of the weak link out of the three kids. Even, well, I guess, you know, maybe the four, right? But Connor's not really in this uh, kind of, uh, you know, in this dynamic here on, on the same level. Uh, but he really is the weak link. He really is all the time being pressured by Shiv, Kendall, and Logan to do their bidding for them, right? And he's always kind of the one um, that's kind of this pushover, or at least has that kind of uh, reputation, right? And so... He concedes, he's down for it, but Connor leaks their decision now to blow up the Gojo deal to Logan, who eventually then shows up at this karaoke bar. So of course, you know, Connor and, and them are out. He says, I want to, I want to do karaoke because I've seen the movies, but I've never done it. Um, so some really good stuff with Connor, which I'll get to as well um, in a minute. Uh, when I when I get to his uh, his part here, um, so they're at the karaoke bar, and we see then as well in between here that Roman and Logan have been in contact, which is something the other two kids have you know basically said no way, you know drawn the line there. They won't even talk to him unless they unless he you know texts them, um, and now we find out that Roman has been texting him back and forth, and so that kind of moment is interesting, and again. It's just this constant kind of theme of this episode that Roman is the, the one kind of weak link in the chain here that is going to break or could break. And of course, Logan is going to go at him, is going to try um, to, to get him to break this, break this um, you know, the, this chain that the kids have formed here and uniting together. So um, he doesn't, so Roman doesn't answer the call because Shiv kind of hangs up on him, uh, you know, uh, so he doesn't even really get to decide. And then Logan shows up at this karaoke bar with Carrie as well. Uh, and so this was probably the scene of the episode, obviously, right? A really kind of tender scene, um, something that, you know, usually we only get like once or twice a season is a Logan and all the kids scene or a Logan and Kendall scene. Like these are always the biggest scenes of the entire series, right? Or And, and within each season. So he apologizes to the kids and tries to make this a personal matter rather than business. He just keeps stressing that, that it, this is a kind of a personal thing. And this is exactly what I talked about and last episode, this is exactly how I interpreted Logan's kind of reaction to them getting pierced. And just throughout the episode, just seemed like he was kind of lonely and sad. And it really was just this more personal thing. The Pierce acquisition even wasn't even a business thing to him. It, he took it kind of personal that they were just trying to hurt him. Um, and he literally basically says that exact thing here in this scene to the kids that, you know, he... You know, they knew that he wanted that for a long time. And so them screwing him out of that. Also, them not even showing up to his birthday party, um, you know, or wishing him happy birthday, even being in contact at all. Um, and so, yeah, it's actually this very, you know, tender moment for Logan. We actually see him be a little vulnerable, actually apologize. He says sorry to the kids. But to them, they're just... You know, I, I feel like it's almost just too far gone, really, at least to Shiv and Kendall in this scene, because even Logan can say sorry, he can be a little bit, um, you know, vulnerable here in this moment, though, of course, he doesn't apologize for everything, but he is willing to apologize here to some extent, and they just won't have it, right? They just relentlessly go at him, reject all of his attempts for, you know, forgiveness or saying, you know, any anything nice like that, Kendall you know, goes on and on and tells him to apologize for this and that, um, which again, like he should, right? He should. Uh, and it, it, it's just such good writing though to me, because again, I, as I said in the last episode, I actually kind of feel bad for Logan in this moment because, you know, the, the way that, you know, they screwed him out of the Pierce acquisition. And again, like I said, I just feel like he was really lonely and sad and I actually kind of felt bad for him. They, the kids kind of looked pathetic to me a little bit in doing that deal because Logan is such a master manipulator, right? And and kind of, you know, making himself out to be the victim in all these situations. Um, and in this one, again, I felt kind of bad for Logan because to me, he's trying to actually be vulnerable. He does apologize. And they're just like going at him even though the whole series, we've seen the way that Logan treats the kids and all the stuff he's done to them, we really shouldn't feel bad for him, really, but we still do. And I think that also speaks to Brian Cox's acting as well, which is something I thought was just like 
crazy, really, really great in this episode, as always, but just really on another level here, especially in this scene. Because again, you, it, without his acting, without that certain portrayal, you may not even feel sorry for him, but but you know this write the writing of kind of this scene and the way it kind of plays out um, and and his acting together. To me, I actually felt bad for Logan in this scene, even though again we probably shouldn't, right? He's just such this master manipulator, which of course we see later at the end of uh, the episode when he's uh, once again manipulating Roman, uh, right, and, and and trying to get him, you know, his best boy back in the fold on his side. So Logan then walks out, and the scene ends. Again, kids just constantly going at him. There's really no room to say anything for Logan. It's just kind of a losing battle at that point. And the kids are just have no interest in, in entertaining what he has to say here. I feel like even if he really did apologize and, and say sorry for all the things Kendall wanted him to say, I still don't think he would have, you know, that they would have actually wanted to hear him out here um, in any capacity. Um, and the other thing, too, is that, you know, this whole thing with Tom um, and the divorce, too, with Shiv, you know, telling Tom to go to all these lawyers to get a conflict of interest. Um, and even that moment is like, yeah, that's really a shitty thing to do. But even Logan comes back and makes a great point in saying, well, if Shiv was around, he probably would have gave her the same advice. She just wasn't around and didn't want to talk to him. So again, still a complete dick move, especially to do to your own daughter, right? But he does have a point. So again, I really like that writing. There's no clear kind of thing like, oh, he's bad, they're good, they're bad, he's good. It's it's really this middle ground here. So Logan then walks out, like I said, and he says the words, you are not serious people. So a really great ending to this scene and the way he kind of walks out again, he always gets the last word. If you notice in a lot of these scenes, he always, always gets the last word um, in a lot of these, you know, moments with Kendall, moments with the kids in general, these scenes, um, it, it's always him, right? So now I'll get to where I kind of feel mixed about this episode and especially this scene here. To me, is this not pretty much the exact same thing he said in the season three finale scene? Is this scene here in this episode not like almost the exact same as that season three finale scene? To me, I'm just, I just feel like it's really kind of rinse and repeat here for this scene. Like I said, it's great. It's definitely the best scene of the episode. The acting, the writing, really great. But haven't we seen this before in season three? Even the last line that I I, I believe I I haven't watched it in a year or so, right? Since it, it since it aired, so I'm not 100 percent on this. But I'm pretty sure one of the last lines he says in the season three finale scene is "You're a bunch of pedestrians," right? To the kids, uh, which is also a great line, which is also the last line, and he walks out in that scene too. Uh, like I said, right? So you're a bunch of pedestrians. You are not serious people. Is that not very similar? It's the same exact kind of sentiment that he's saying to them. And both of these scenes end the exact same way. Yet we're supposed to be kind of trying to progress in the story. And this is now, you know, two episodes after that, um, months after in the kind of timeline of the show. And we're still having this exact kind of scene and it ends kind of the same way. Um, to me, I don't know. I just, I would have liked to see more progress made here. It really just seems like kind of a rinse and repeat. It's the same type of scene. We're in the same kind of situation. The kids don't want to talk to Logan. Logan says, you know, you're not serious people. You're, 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 uh, you're, you know, you're a bunch of pedestrians, right? Um, and then he walks out. So I don't know. I, I just feel like, and it's kind of how I feel just with the whole Gojo deal uh, storyline in itself, but I'll talk more about that towards the end of the episode, but that's just something I noticed. I mean, it, it's just so similar that I just, I, I don't know, I would have liked to see a little more progress here, and the way this scene began, I really liked, because it's Logan being vulnerable, actually, you know, having this kind of tender moment with the kids, actually apologizing, and that's something that he did not do in that scene three finale scene, that's something where, the, you know, there's been progress there. But then to have the scene end in the exact same way and have this dynamic be basically the same, it just was a little frustrating to me. So anyways, that's just kind of my my, my thought on, on that scene there. Like I said, great scene, but just something that I feel like we've seen before play out 
in that season three finale scene, uh, which to me was better, obviously. I mean, the stakes are a little higher as well, but uh, just overall, I think that was a, a, a better scene of that as well. Um, so yeah, this is kind of uh, where that ends up then uh, with the kids and, and the whole Gojo deal and where Logan's at. But as of now, Sandy, Stewie, and the three kids uh, before the very end with Roman and Logan uh, are on the same page here and they're uh, going to attempt to blow this up and uh, at least try to you know get renegotiating on, uh, on the deal. So have to see where that goes, right? All right, so then Connor, I uh, just wanted to follow his kind of plot uh, in this episode, a subplot. Um, so Connor and, uh, and Willa's wedding rehearsal. So when the kids finally get there to this rehearsal, Willa is already ready to leave. And uh, so she gets up to this speech that we, you know, Connor says, and, and she says, I can't do this and leaves, right? So then we see Connor kind of tracing or uh, tracking her phone all night to see if she's going to leave the country, uh, which is kind of funny, but, you know, pretty sad too, right? If that, you know, actually did happen and, and Connor lost her. And uh, a really sad monologue as well about not needing love, right? He, he says, you know, I don't need love. And it's, it's a really great moment for Connor. I feel like one of his best moments of the series, really, in this episode, just the whole arc. And even in the scenes where he's with the other three kids and they're spending time with them, having this night out, this karaoke bar, he always just seems so distant from them and never included in what they're trying to do. Well, you know, obviously one, because he's on Logan's side in the whole business thing, but they just never pay attention to him. And so when he has this monologue, then after Logan walks out, I think, and then he walks out of that kind of lounge that they're in there at the karaoke bar, and he has that great, you know, couple lines there where he said, you know, I don't need love. You guys need love, but I don't. I can live with, you know, um, something like it, you know, if, if, uh, you've you haven't experienced love. You learn to live without it. Something like that. Um, I don't know the exact line, but anyways, great line and just really sums up exactly what Connor uh, has gone through this whole time. And great, uh, you know, moment there in last season when you see, you know, the I'm the eldest son, right? Really funny, right? Really funny. But again, the brilliance of the show is just on a dramatic level. That's also so brilliant because it's exactly you know, he's trying to remind them I'm the eldest son because he's so often forgotten and just neglected by Logan and all the other kids. So I feel like that really came to a head here in this moment. Obviously, he's really torn up over Willa and the whole wedding, a lot of stress. And so it kind of just it comes out. And I feel like the reaction from the other kids too is, is really great because they finally notice you know, that what they're doing and, and, you know, how Connor feels because he doesn't always say this either, right? Um, but it is uh, is definitely apparent. So yeah, you definitely feel bad for Connor here in this entire episode. But thankfully, when he goes home at the end of uh, the episode here, he does see Willa in the bed and she is back. She did not leave the country to Cuba or anything like that. She does come back and uh, it sounds like the wedding is a go. So good thing for Connor. Of course, we do know as well that Connor wanted to use their wedding as some sort of, you know, optics for his campaign. So, you know, I, you kind of understand where Will is coming from here. Obviously, it, it doesn't sound like they're going to have it at the Statue of Liberty, like he said. Um, sometimes it's going to be a little bit smaller than that. Um, but you definitely understand where Will is coming from, too. What a stressful thing to go into. And even her decision to, you know, say yes and, and go ahead with the wedding was a difficult one. So... We'll have to see, you know, uh, the what the wedding has in store next episode. Um, I think we've had, this will be the second wedding or maybe the third wedding now, I guess, if you count Shantyshire, um, right, with the kid's mom um, getting uh, remarried, I believe, right? So if, I think this may be three, thir the third wedding episode. So um, yeah, really looking forward to it. Should be a good one. But uh, Willa is back and it looks like it is on. So then I just want to end off your like I said, I'd pick up on Carrie's audition tape and that kind of thing. So I just wanted to kind of uh, talk about Tom and Greg in the context of the tape because I think that's just the, the, the best part of this episode for the both of them. So uh, she records this audition tape to become an anchor at ATN. And uh, it is funny because it kind of plays through. The kids are watching it at the beginning. And then we see the uh, Jerry and uh, is it Hugo that's in there? Um, and they're watching the tape as well when Logan comes in. So... Pretty much everyone at the company here, kind of at that level of management, um, has you know got their hands on this tape, and and they're all just laughing because she's so bad, right? Or she's you know 
she she's just not very you know practiced. She's not very well versed in being the anchor, and so of course, and they all kind of resent her too with being with Logan and being his assistant and getting this kind of chance. So obviously, they're gonna kind of laugh and and poke fun. So. Tom is very enthusiastic about her becoming an anchor as well with this, you know, scene with Logan until Logan kind of gives him the look. He doesn't say anything, but Tom picks up on it right away and then, you know, goes down the whole line of, oh, she needs a lot of work. She's maybe a few years away and, and this stuff. So it's just great. And there, it really is kind of this, this great dynamic. And it really has always been with Tom and Logan. And then in previous seasons, this season actually Greg has taken a big step up, but previous seasons, it would always then be kind of mirrored by Tom and Greg. So Tom would treat Greg the way Logan treats him. And so this dynamic with Tom and Logan is just so great. It, it really is Tom kind of being awkward and kind of just like very lightly stepping around Logan. And that's exactly how Greg was in the earlier seasons with Tom. So really funny and, and Obviously, great to see Greg kind of take a step up and, and that dynamic has changed as well. So then, of course, Tom tasks Greg with telling her the bad news that she's not going to become an anchor because Logan obviously doesn't want any part of it. Like, he you know, wants it to seem like he didn't have any part in the decision of, of, of it at all. Tells Tom to do it and then he tells Greg to do it. And this was just a hilarious scene, one of the funniest of the episode for sure. Uh, you know, he blames it all on this focus group that has, you know, concerns with her and all this stuff. And, and Carrie's reaction was great too. Um, something about, I, I'm, I'm going to skin you like a human string cheese or something like that. Um, just a, what a great line and, and the way Greg kind of reacts. And uh, just a really great back and forth there. Nicholas Braun uh, kills it as always. Um, Really, uh, yeah, really just a great comedic moment. And he really does a good job, too. Like, he really kind of stuck to the, the script that him and Tom discussed, the focus group and all that stuff. Um, so, yeah, he did a good job. And, and he, he lives to uh, fight another day until maybe Carrie uh, figures out there's no focus group. But, um, yeah, really great stuff. And so it is a, a really interesting, too, to see Tom and Greg be so high up at ATN. Um, and if Logan really does kind of pursue that, really focus all of his efforts there, and then as we see in the last um, scene of the episode there, when Logan, you know, tries to get Roman back on his side and says, you know, I don't want you at ATN. I need you at ATN. Um, so if Roman comes into the fold and, and uh, takes the other uh, woman's uh, spot, Sid, I believe, he takes her spot then Tom and Greg are going to be reporting to Roman. So what an interesting uh, kind of, uh, you know, uh, depth chart there, right, of, of uh, you know, what, what kind of management level would be and uh, all that stuff and who's reporting to who. So um, could be really uh, interesting stuff in store there if that does happen. Um, but obviously, uh, you know, a lot has to kind of, you know, depend on where Roman is going to go and if Logan's able to kind of, like I said, kind of master manipulate him once again. So anyways, those are about uh, all my thoughts for the episode. Now I'll get to my rating and talk a little bit more about where I see the kind of season uh, heading here as we uh, go forward in the future episodes. All right, so in terms of a rating for this one, I'm going to give it a 3.5 out of 5. So a bit of a step down, obviously, from that premiere episode, which I thought was really great. Uh, near perfect episode, really, uh, for me. So this one itself was well written, right? Like the story of it made sense. Um, some really great scenes, including that Logan one with the kids, um, some other stuff with ATN. So just like itself was well written, the dialogue really sharp, you know, everything, you know, up to par, right? A great episode. But it's just the way that it fits into kind of the big picture here of the story and, and basically the, the really the whole series, right? Like where the plot has been the whole time. This is where my criticisms lie for this one, right? So it really has felt like one step forward, two steps back. The way that kind of season three basically went. I mean, you know, in, in parts of season three, we really do move forward and the plot does definitely advance. But it's just, that was my main criticism with season three was they really had set up the whole Kendall arc in season two, which I think is, is still one of the best character arcs I've ever seen on television. I mean, just such an amazing job they did with season two with Kendall. Season three, it was really primed to have, you know, Kendall really rise to the top. It was the season that he was supposed to rise. 
And then that really just fizzled out very quickly. And then it really becomes this kind of same, you know, the, the same type of show. We, you know, the progression isn't quite on the same level there. There's not like a, a kind of a big goal there in the, in the future to reach. And then it is kind of, you know, kind of blown up. Gojo is taken over the company. This dynamic is completely changing here in the finale of season three. And now in this episode, it just seems like we're right back where we were before the season three finale. Like if this, if they go ahead with this, the Gojo deal is somehow broken up and Matson, you know, leaves and, you know, all of a sudden now it's back in play then what was the point of the season three finale, right? It just seems like they're undoing what they just got done doing in season three with that whole plot and what it was all progressing to. So again, even with the premiere last episode, I, I thought it was so promising because they really are setting up this clear dynamic of the kids united together on one side, finally against Logan on the other. And it was gonna be kind of this new dynamic now to finish out the show and, you know, everything that we went through has kind of brought us to this point. But now, even with the end of the episode and Logan trying to get Roman on his side, I mean, this is like it, basically what's season three. I mean, it's just playing out the same kind of beats, the same dynamics. And if this is kind of where it goes, now Roman's going to be back with, with Logan, be his kind of best boy again, as he was uh, for season three. That kind of is the arc they played out for Roman there. Um the kids will be separated again and, you know, then they'll be back trying to unite and see kind of where they can get from, where, where they can get to. And then if the Gojo deal falls through, now they're fighting for the company again. So I don't know. I just, I just don't know where they're going with this. And I could be completely too early on this criticism, right? I mean, who knows, right? And, in you know, the next episode, they might close the Gojo deal still, and this might just be a little blip. And then we still go forward and, and, you know, that's what it is. Maybe this is just part of a clear, long game that they're playing out here in the final season. I'm willing to be wrong here. I, I really hope I am, of course. But I have to voice this now because it's just something I've noticed. With season three, it was a little frustrating at times, especially with that whole Kendall arc that just kind of fizzled out. And now it just seems like, again, we're going backwards. Like, this is something that... You know, season three went, we went through all of season three, we get to that big finale, we get to that twist, Logan's selling the company to Gojo, and now are we going to undo it? Like, just like that? So anyways, um, I'm not sure, again, maybe I'm being too harsh, maybe I'm looking into this too far this early on in the season, could be, but that's just my thoughts. I I'm just a little frustrated that we're taking one step forward and then we're getting two steps back to basically the same dynamic that we were in last season and here we are again. So, and I've heard that criticism too by by some people who aren't, you know, huge huge fans of this show is that, you know, um it it just kind of the, the same thing kind of happens over and over again and there's not really a clear plot, you know, throughout the throughout the series and that's something I completely disagree with people on in season 2 because Again, it's it's a really that character arc for Kendall. That is the plot of season two, or at least the, the main plot, right, going forward. But I have to really kind of agree with those. Um, I don't I don't want to call them haters, but at least the people who are just a little bit more critical of the show I have to agree with them uh, on this episode and kind of where I see this trajectory uh, in, in particular. So um, kind of unfortunate. Again, this is my favorite show. I mean, I, I think this is easily um, one of the best, objectively speaking, shows on television right now. But I think this is a little bit of an issue. So really hoping to see next episode to see what happens and see if they are just going to go forward here um, with the Gojo deal. And again, maybe it's just a little blip. We'll have to see. So anyways, those are just my thoughts on kind of how this episode fits into the overall arc of the series and this season as well. So my favorite character for this one or a spotlight here just uh, wanted to focus on is Roman Roy, played by Kieran Culkin, of course. Um, I thought, again, the way this episode ends and Logan trying to get him on his side, I thought it was... You know, a really great dynamic. We've seen it before, of course, but a really great dynamic nonetheless. And you really see throughout this episode, again, like I like I talked about, he really is kind of the weak link, the only vulnerable piece now of this kind of uh, unified uh, core, right, of Shiv, Kendall, and Roman. He's the weak one, right? He is the one that still really cares about Logan, you know, has, was sending him text messages about his birthday and, you know, still making contact with him. So 
He is the one. And Logan knows that, right? Logan is and knows exactly who to go for here to break it apart. And so, of course, that's what he does at the end of the episode. So it'd be really interesting to see where they take Roman in this season. Uh, but I thought this episode was just really great and kind of showing that again and again and again you know, in these kind of subtle moments. And then it really does make a lot of sense with that final scene and kind of building that up for Roman to the point where, you know, again, Logan's trying to manipulate him and really trying to get at him. So we'll have to see what he does because that's something I really loved about him in season three is they really built up that whole arc for that moment where he denies Logan in that final, in that in that finale scene, right, with Shiv and Kendall there. He has a chance. Logan gives him a chance to, you know, kind of come over to the dark side with him, right? And, you know, my my best boy and, right, talks to him and all that, yet he still denies him. It's finally that kind of moment where Roman fights back and stands up for himself. One of the first times we saw that in the series. And so, at least to Logan, right? At least to Logan. Um, and so we'll have to see, you know, whether that same thing plays out here or, like I said, is he just going to kind of fall back into the same um, type of thing? So we'll have to see, but really fascinating uh, stuff here with Roman in this episode for me. Uh, and then in terms of the predictions, um, honestly, it's kind of difficult to make predictions when we go backward uh, from episode to episode. Last episode, I thought, okay, this is the first battle of many of this kind of war between Logan and the kids now. It's a clear conflict now they set up. This is how the season's going to play out. And then this episode completely derails all of that. And it sounds like we might be going back to the dynamics of season three. So I hope the Gojo deal uh, either closes and we move on from it or... It is upended, Matson leaves, and now we move forward that way. I, I just hope they pick a lane here uh, and make it kind of a for sure thing on Gojo next episode. I would just like to have it be done uh, at this point with Matson and Gojo. Um, let's just, you know, decide which one it's going to be. Is it going to go through? Is it not going to go through? Um, but we'll have to see. Again, maybe I'm overreacting. Maybe it is this blip, and then they're going to kind of renegotiate and then you know, Matson and Gojo ends up, you know, they end up closing in a couple episodes or something like that. We'll have to see. Um, but I just hope that they, they choose one direction and then we just move on and we see kind of what happens after that in the aftermath of either way it goes, whether it closes or it's upended. And now we're back to kind of the drawing board with Logan and them at the head of Waystar Royco. And then, uh, you know, we kind of go forward from there. So um, I do think Roman is going to go with Logan next episode to talk to Matson though. And I don't necessarily view that as a betrayal because he, he isn't necessarily saying that he's on Logan's side or he's with him, but he is probably going to go and talk to him to Matson because, I mean, it really is kind of in the kid's best interest too for him to go to talk to Matson because he, you know, they want to renegotiate the deal anyways. So I think we are going to see that play out, which again, we already did see that play out in season three. But again, if it has to happen, we probably will see Roman uh, and Logan go to talk to Matson together. I could see that happening. And then, of course, Connor's wedding is next episode. So I'm looking forward to all the shenanigans and everything that comes along with his wedding. Um, I'm sure there'll be some really, really funny moments uh, that come out of that one. So anyways, those are all my thoughts on this episode of Succession. Like I said off the top, love to hear your guys' thoughts if you agree with me or disagree with me. Um, either way, however you felt about the episode, so I'd love to hear your uh, thoughts there in the comments. Um, and yeah, so we'll see you then uh, next week for Succession Season 4, Episode 3.